point two, solving equations having like terms in parentheses, we're going to expand upon where we left off in section 3.1. In 3.1 we did two step equations, now we're going to look at equations where there might be a requirement of another step or two before we do the steps that we did in the last section. Alright, now, when you have one or both sides, and it's primarily going to be one in this assignment, when you have one or both sides of the equations that can be simplified, we simplify like we do uh, any kind of variable expression. We eliminate parentheses and we combine like terms. Now we've done this before. We've done this skill before in previous assignments where we were simplifying an expression. But now the expressions are going to be on one of the sides of the equation. Now here's an example. I'm going to kind of skip over to here. It says tell whether the given value of the variable is a solution of the equation. Notice here the like terms on the left side of my equal sign here. But I'm not going to solve this one in a traditional manner. I'm going to use the definition because it says tell whether this given value is indeed a solution. So I am going to just substitute this right in. That's how we solve. It's kind of like our check. This is 4 times 2 plus 9 times 2 plus 1. Does that equal 27? This is 8 plus 18 plus 1 equals 27. 8 and 18 is 26 and 1. 27 equals 27. So yes. Okay, that is indeed a solution of that equation. Now let's jump over to here. My steps are going to be simplify, and this is if necessary. If necessary. If you have like terms, if you have parentheses, you must simplify first. And then you undo your adding or subtracting. And then you undo your multiplying or dividing, like we did in the last section on the two-step equations. So I have some examples here. We're going to cut through these quickly. Notice that on the left side, of my, uh, my equation here, I have like terms. Here's like terms in here. 3n, and this is a plus 2n. Now, I know there's a minus sign here, but the minus sign goes with the 40. The plus sign goes with the 2n. Positive 3n plus 2n is 5n. Minus the 40 equals 15. And once we have simplified, we end up with an equation that should look quite a bit like what we were doing in the previous section. It's this chapter kind of builds on one section onto the next, as math has a tendency to do. So now I'm going to solve this by undoing any adding or subtracting. That means I've got to get rid of the minus 40. And to do that, I'm going to use the little shortcut notation. I'm going to add 40 to both sides. And I get 5n is equal to, it looks like 55. And now I'm going to finish this off. Step 3, I'm going to undo any multiplication or division. Well, I'm multiplying by 5, so I'm going to divide by 5. And I get n is equal to 11. Now, just like I did over here, I can check my work by taking the 11, plugging it in here, and plugging it in here, and seeing if I get a true statement. I'm going to do it mentally. 3 times 11 is 33. Minus 40 is negative 7 plus 2 times 11, that's 22. So negative 7 plus 22 is 15, and that indeed is true. Now, in the next example, I don't have like terms, but I have parentheses. So this is where... We eliminate the parentheses, we use the distributive property. If you're forgotten, we use the distributive property to eliminate parentheses like this. So I'm going to multiply through. 2 times x is 2x, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, equals 6. Now, just like the last one, I've turned this equation into a nice little two-step equation like we did in section 1. So now I'm going to solve this out, I'm going to do it the more traditional way, I'm going to add 2 to the ends, and I get 2x is equal to 8. The 2 is times the x. I'll divide by 2, both sides, and I have x is equal to 4. Not so bad. This next one over here looks kind of weird because I have 0 on one side of my equation. Don't panic. It'll still work out. I have 17 plus 3x minus 11 equals 0. I don't have any parentheses, but I have like terms, these two constant terms. This gives me 3x. That's a plus 3x, so positive 3x. This is a positive 17, and this minus sign in front of the 11 is like a negative 11. A positive 17 and a negative 11 is a positive 6, so I'm going to write plus 6 equals 0. Now I'm going to go back down here. I've simplified. I'm going to go to these steps. I'm going to undo adding, subtracting, undo multiplying, dividing. I'm going to get rid of the plus 6. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. I get 3x is equal to negative 6. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. And I finish it off by dividing both sides in this case by 3, negative 6 divided by 3, negative divided by positive is negative, goes in twice, x equals negative 2. One more over here, this time the variables on the right side, we've, we've encountered those equations before, and I have parentheses, so I'm going to have to distribute, okay, I get negative 22 is equal to, now negative 2 times a positive 17 is a negative 34. 
And here's where it gets tricky, careful. Negative two times a minus three x. Negative times negative, that minus three x is like a negative three x. Negative times negative is positive or plus six x. Now it doesn't look near so bad. I'm gonna add 34 to both sides. You say, no, 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 don't add. It already is adding, you have to subtract, it's a negative. All right, that plus sign goes with the six x. That plus sign goes with the six x, tell me it's a positive six x. But that minus sign in front of, the, that negative sign in front of the 34, that tells me this is a negative 34. I'm gonna to have to add a positive 34 to both sides to get this to work out. So I'm gonna use the shortcut notation here. That gives me 12, a negative 22, and a positive 34. Remember, subtract, take the sign of the bigger one. And then over here, 6x. And you can see this is gonna come out pretty nicely. I'm gonna divide both sides by six, and 12 divided by six is two and a half, x equals two. This example, has 2y minus 3 times the quantity y plus 4 equals 13. Now the reason I saved this one for last, or second for last, is because of the minus sign that's in front of the 3 that's in front of the parentheses. We talked about these when we were simplifying expressions. I'm going to remind you that when you distribute here, because you must distribute here to get rid of the parentheses, we eliminate parentheses first. I'm going to get 2y, that part doesn't change. The minus 3 it's like a negative three times the y, that's a negative three y or a minus three y. Careful now, the negative three times the positive four is a negative 12. That's a minus 12 and that equals 13. Now it gets fun. Two y minus three y, remember that's like adding the opposite, a positive two and a negative three is a negative one y. Now I'm gonna write negative one y over here. Oop minus 12 equals 13. But I want to make note that uh, negative one y can also be written as the opposite of y. Remember, when there's no number in front of the variable, the coefficient's one, and when there's a negative sign or an opposite sign in front of the variable, it's a negative one. So now I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to get rid of the minus 12. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. That's kind of tricky. Look through that. Make sure that you understand that. Replay the tape if you need to for the explanation. Make sure you understand that. That happens from time to time. This is the opposite of y. See the opposite of y? Negative one y is the opposite of y. Equals, and that's gonna be 25. Now I'm gonna catch a big break as far as how much you have to write down. If you get a problem to the point where you have the opposite of y or the opposite of x or whatever the, the variable might be, equals a number, then all you have to do is tell me what that variable is equal to. The opposite of y is equal to 25 means that y is equal to negative 25, and that's my answer. Now, the reason that I'm going to let you do that is because, remember, this is the same as negative 1y equals 25. It's the, ne the negative 1 is times the y. I would divide both sides by negative 1, and I get y equals 25 divided by negative 1 is negative 25. I'm going to let you skip those steps and go from here to here, but this is the reason why. So if I stop you and say, how come you went from here to here? You should be able to explain because it's the same as dividing both sides by negative one. My last example is a little bit of an application. It says find the value of x for this rectangle with perimeter 50. Now perimeter, remember, is when you add up all the sides. So if this is 9x, this is 9x, and if this is 7, then this is 7. So I have 9x plus 7 plus 9x plus seven, that's the perimeter. I add up the four sides, I get the perimeter, but they tell me that the perimeter in this problem is 50, so this must equal 50. I combine like terms, I have like terms here and here. Nine X and nine X is 18 X, plus seven and plus seven is plus 14, and that equals 50. Now it's an easy two-step equation. Undo what's rounded here, I'm gonna undo the adding before I undo the multiplying, I'm gonna subtract 14 from both sides. 18x equals 36, and then I'm going to divide both sides by the number times the variable. I'm going to divide both sides by 18, and I get x is equal to 2, and that's our answer. Now these problems, these equations, as you can tell, they're getting a little bit more difficult, especially this last one here, because there were a couple tricks there with the signs that you had to be aware of. But you'll get better at this if you practice, practice, practice.